We good. To, we good to go. Okay. Um, yeah, I just just want to kick things off here and say I think uh, we're excited for the start of the season with training camp right around the corner. Um, feel like we've had a good productive off season. Uh, made it through the job here for a few months um, since I was last up here, and um, you know still here and have the job, so I haven't messed it up too much. But uh, no, we feel good with where our team's at, with where our roster's at. We'll add a few more players over the next few days uh, to invite to camp. And then, um, you know, from there, we'll see what we have. We'll, I think it'll be a good competitive training camp with some uh, positions and some playing time up for grabs. And uh, we really want to focus on getting off to a good start this season. So, um, you know, I think our, our players have been in the gym throughout the summer. Good young development program we have going. And our, our veterans are starting to trickle back in now. So uh, we're, I just think we're in a good place mentally, physically, um, healthy going into camp and, and looking forward to a great season. Uh, any Hi. questions to open it up? Yeah. Hi. Good to see you. You too. Uh, when it comes to that open roster spot and the guys that you're going to be, you know, bringing in and having in training camp, what are some characteristics that you think is important to fill that 15th spot with? Yeah, I think you know we got two spots, 14 and 15. Um, not, we don't have to use them both, but we're open to it. And uh, I think from that standpoint. If, if there was a positional need or something that we absolutely needed, I think maybe we've already pursued and committed to that. The nice thing is I think we have good versatility and optionality throughout the roster. So nothing that we absolutely have to do right now. We're bringing in a mix of different players that we think can do some different things and we'll evaluate in camp. Uh, but I don't think we have our sights set on any one thing right now in terms of a, a guard, a big, a wing. Um, a young player, an old player, um, we're, we're kind of open. And I think that's a, a great position to be in, where we have flexibility and um, can kind of evaluate to, to, to see what's the best for our team. Mike, can you characterize the discussions with Dwight Howard and what led to you know, a, a yes, no decision on him there? Yeah, I mean, I would just say in general, like we brought maybe 40 or 50 guys in this summer to, to get a further look at. Um, no, knowing agents and people around the league know we've got two roster spots open. So there's a desire to come in and uh, meet with us and, and play with our guys. And, and we've looked at a lot of different players, and uh, some of them we'll bring into camp. But um, you know, the player you mentioned is just one of many that we brought in and evaluated. And um, you know, I think right now you'll know more about who we're inviting to camp in a couple days. But overall, um, you know, we feel good about what we've done this summer and. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep our options open in terms of who we need to add. Mike, what are your thoughts on uh, Kuminga and Moody entering their third season, and how do you feel like adding a veteran like Chris Paul can aid their development? Yeah, I feel great about those guys. Um, they both had really good summers, and they've been around here some, and they've been elsewhere where they're getting good work in. So we're excited for them to see what they can do in year three. Um, I think there'll be some more opportunity and playing time available. And as you mentioned with Chris, adding him into the mix, as well as Corey Joseph, even Dario Saric, I think all those guys can really complement and help our younger players uh, with the way they play, their experience, their maturity. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited and optimistic about what JK and Moses can do in year three here. Obviously, it's, I mean, the season hasn't even fully started yet, but both Clay and Steve are entering like the final years of their contracts. How? I mean, how have those have those discussions begun? How important or is it important to get it going earlier, or just table that later time? Yeah, no. So I mean, with those guys, I mean, the main thing is it's it's good is on both sides. Um, I think there's a desire to extend or be back or you know may, make sure those guys are in the fold with the Golden State Warriors moving forward. So I think both sides feel that way, and and when you're working off of that idea, I think you know you can come to come to a deal, and so hopefully we can do that. In those scenarios, there's no real specific timeline um, in, in the immediate future that we have to uh, abide by. So we'll, we'll continue to have conversations, but the main goal is to, you know, secure those guys moving forward. And you know, I think they feel a little bit of the same. But we're we're optimistic, and I think we're in a good place there. Mike, obviously, Steve and your predecessor had a very tight relationship. Now that you've stepped into the role, how's your relationship with Steve changed? You had one before, but I imagine it's a lot more. A lot more time together now. Yeah, I think it helps for myself being around here the last few years, um, getting to know Steve, Steve getting to know me a little bit. And, you know, obviously our communication and touch points have ramped up um, now with, with this promotion. But um, overall, uh, I have a great relationship with, T, with Steve, a ton of success. Uh, 
that he's brought this way. And, you know, I'll probably lean on him in a lot of ways. He's had this position before as a general manager. So um, he, he definitely can provide some great insight, and he already has. And um, I'll continue to help and support him in any way I can. Uh, Mike, to your earlier point, why why specifically are you comfortable with the potential center rotation? And why do you feel like maybe size is a little bit overblown? The need for size is a little bit overblown. Yeah, I mean, you know, I want to get into camp and see a little bit um, about our needs. I'm not fully committed to say we're good at that position, but I, I know for camp we are. We've got five guys that can play center in training camp. It, it, to me, it's a position that – you can't play multiple of them of, so I want to make sure everybody gets enough reps. And I think that's been our discussion with the coaching staff as well. And I, I think that's the path we'll head down. From there, again, we've got to evaluate it. And I think with us, we have to be very careful about the types of players we bring in. Um, you know, just because a guy is tall or just because a guy can shoot or just because a guy um, is athletic doesn't necessarily mean they, they can fit in the way we play. And so we got to be very mindful of that, and we'll continue to do so. But I like the five guys we can play at center right now. I think they all fit well with, with, with how Steve wants to play, and uh, looking forward to evaluating it in the next few weeks. Um, Mike, you mentioned a couple times, and Steve's mentioned, that Chris Paul's role starter bench will be determined in training camp. But what are some of the determining factors that you're looking for in training camp that will, de that will decide that? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people's roles will be determined in camp, um, not just Chris, but um, a little bit of your question probably defer to Steve on. Um, I'll, I'll you know, chat with him on it. Um, he'll bounce things off our way as a front office. But ultimately, you get into camp and you get lineups together and you start thinking through the season. That's, that's a coaching thing. And so totally defer to him on that. And I just know we've got, we've got a pretty good roster. And when you talk about Chris and the five starters that we had last year who, when they played, were, were great. Um, I think we got good optionality. Hey, Mike, as we look at the open roster spots, what's the confidence level knowing that you should have a full season now of Gary Payton II back in the fold and Andrew Wiggins as well, just kind of that automatic boost early on? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're confident in it. I mean, those guys have put in good time this summer. Uh, their bodies, their health's in good shape, but, you know, injuries happen. And so you want to have the right amount of, of depth and backup and, and all that stuff. But, yeah, knock on wood right now. We feel great about where those guys are at, the rest of the guys on our roster, uh, both physically, mentally. So, um, you know, we're in a good place here in September. How much have your veterans been around or been meeting, I guess, elsewhere together? Uh, how much has Chris been involved in that? And, and w like, what are you seeing right now as far as how ready and hungry, you know, your veterans seem to be? Yeah, I've seen a great amount of connectivity this offseason, whether they're meeting up in areas and, you know, Southern California or Las Vegas, what have you. Um, not only that, there's some times in August where we had our young guys in, and Steph, Steph was in. CP, I mean, Chris Paul took a Southwest flight at 6 a.m. to be up here to, for a workout one day. So these guys are these guys are all in on making it work and and us having a great season. So um, really, like I said, I really feel good with where we're at in September, and you know, got a ton of work to do, but I think the foundation is in a good place right now. You mentioned connection or connectivity a lot last few months uh, when you got the job, other times. How much has that been an emphasis from you guys to them, or has that been you and Steph and everybody? How much has that work come up, and how many things? You mentioned a few examples of it. How much have you seen that happen leading up to camp? Yeah, it's, it's been huge. I mean, I think not only with the players, but the coaching staff, the front office, we're all sort of talking about it and preaching it and kind of lost a little bit of that last year. And I think the players – you almost haven't really had to say much to him about it. They got it. They know we were a little discombobulated, as, especially as the season went on last year. And um, everybody knows that we need to correct it. And, and, and I think we've made the right steps this summer, and we'll continue to need to, to build through camp. But uh, you know, we're we're in a good place in that area. But you know, it doesn't just you, you got to keep it going. When when CP3 flew out here, well, who was the workout with? Just was it with Steph and Drantman and all those? Yeah, guys? we just had a we had a. You know, our guys are in the gym a lot this summer playing pickup, and we had a pickup game. Steph, you know, Steph is in a decent amount, um, but he's he's got a busy schedule in the off season. So it was a day where Steph knew he was coming in. Chris, being in his off season home in LA, made the effort to get up here, and you know, Chris, that's the one thing about Chris. I mean, he loves to play, and so it means getting on a it means getting on a flight early in the morning to get up here and get a game in. Um, Got to respect the guy. Mike, where do you where do things stand right now uh, with with Clay Thompson and and just your desire to get an extension for him and and get him more aligned with Steph Curry's remaining years and now Draymond Green's remaining years? Yeah, that's really important to us. You know, to keep Clay in the fold, 
Um, he provides an element uh, that's so unique to this this team, and you know he knows the ins and outs. He's been here as long as anybody, so um, you know continuing Clay's career here as a Warrior is really important to us. I think last year he showed, you know, for the most part, he he can really still play at a high level. And in some ways, I think missing two full seasons, um, you know, you maybe back make make up a little bit on the back end. And I think he's primed to have a really good. Uh, kind of mid mid thirties career, and uh, I know he's put a ton of time in this off season. So excited for the year he he's got ahead of him. Clay last off season kind of talked about the mental hurdle that he was facing doing where he wasn't playing pickup, et cetera. And now we know that this off season we've seen him in some of these workout videos doing pickup. From your perspective, player wise, and now in your role now, how important is that to to see him get those those reps, be be back in pickup mentally as well. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I haven't been there myself. As you get older, uh, the off season has become even more important. You got to find a way to, to keep yourself in shape, in the mix. So when training camp comes around, you're ready to go. And I think to, for for Clay, it's been tough the last few years with his injuries. He's doing a lot of rehab, and you get to the point where it's like, all right, I'm sure he got through our championship season and just. It was it was in some ways just like a reset and a letdown and and I think last summer was tough for him but I think this summer he's he's been a totally different animal and really engaged on it and like I said in a great place right now to to kick off the season. Like you mentioned, training camp and the competition that that you want to see in that is that something that's just a circumstance of having two roster spots open so let's just see who we got or is it something that you and Steve and the rest of the guys want to establish kind of a tone for the season get get a little more sweat in at the beginning of the year to kind of get the tires a little bit of tread? Yeah, I think it's both. I mean, certainly with the roster spots, so you got some stuff to figure out in terms of who you want on the team. But also, you know, I think with last year, you're coming off a championship. The, sh- the summer is shorter. Uh, we started camp early because we had to go to Japan. It-, it was just such a whirlwind, such a quick turnaround. Now we've had some time to sort of get a good summer underneath us, um, you know, re-energize, and, you know, we'll kick off camp at kind of the normal time of year, actually a little bit later this year, starting in early October. And um, it just feels like the summer's gone on long enough. It's time to get going again, and, and, and that's that's what we're looking forward to. How do you think um, you guys will handle this new rest policy that the league is, is trying to implement? Yeah, I mean, certainly the parameters are, um, you know, based around a lot of our stuff in terms of back-to-backs, national TV games, and having four players that sort of qualify under the, the load management rest policy. And, you know, look, the league makes the rules. We'll play by them. That's, that's the best I can say. I do know that, you know, we have a tremendous amount of data and science and input from our players in terms of how much they should be playing, how much they shouldn't be playing. And we've always leaned on that in the past. We'll continue to lean on it, but we've got to, you know, we've got to play by the rules too. Just going back to uh, Kaminga and Moody, and just how do you feel about the overall depth that you have? And I think you referenced opportunities for for them to to play. Uh, is it at a point now where you just, in your mind, hey, they have to they have to be a part of it on a night in night out basis, which hasn't always been the case. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about have to or any mandates as as far as those guys go, but I also think they're they're probably more ready. Um, and you always want to get these guys minutes early in their career and year one, year two, and we've talked about a lot of that the last few years. But, like, year three, these guys are older now. They know our system. They're more mature. I think our veterans, our coaches trust them more. So I think there realistically will be much more of an opportunity for them to play. Uh, but that being said, we've got a good team. We've got good depth. There's no, there's no guarantees. Um, uh, but, I, I, you know, as far as those guys go, I, th- I think they're in a good place. <laughs> 